we've been working with him for a few years. We haven't seen him in person since before COVID, but um, he's here to talk a lot about your nutrition, um, allergies, iron, and blood work, and a whole bunch of different things that can really help you if you're deficient in a certain uh, vitamin or mineral or whatever it is. You can, you can help kind of identify that and go from there. So, awesome. without further ado, we'll the uh, technical guy came up and said that there's another crew coming in here. So often, um, thank you parents for coming. There's often, you guys are so grown up, you don't meet your parents, right? So um, there's uh, often a lot of parents ask me a question, but the older guys, you guys were already making, some of you were making bets on which of these sports supplements was better. So I can tell you're interested. Please do ask your questions, but I want to get going. Um, I can't tell you everything I know in one hour or less because about sports nutrition because we just don't have the time. But here's some things I put together that I think can help with hockey. And uh, I, I, in the past, you guys have been pretty interested in this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with talking about performance measurements. So I, I went to the University of Calgary and some of the things we did there were pretty invasive. So we actually punch a hole in somebody's muscle, pull it out, and you can tell the different fiber types. Type 2A, very, but type 2B will run very, very fast. So you, you skate after the back, go, 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 but you can't keep doing that. So then it fades and then you need the type 2 fiber, the 2A fiber to keep maintaining it so you can, it's not as fatigable. Well, what things from your food affect those muscles? Because you want to be able to skate faster for longer. So we're going to talk about performance measurements, so muscle biopsy, that's pretty invasive. So we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about other ways to measure your um, also, you can do VO2 max where you have a, a machine hooked up that will take your oxygen and your carbon dioxide ratios. There's all kinds of ways. What we're going to talk about is a lot about uh, blood work. And there's a difference between baseline healthy, a lot of people here, and there's nothing wrong with that. This is not like second place to the first loser kind of thing. There's nothing wrong with a lot of people in my practice, I practice a lot of natural focus medicine, so I might have people with diabetes, or people with multiple sclerosis, or whatever. It's not wrong with being here, but you guys, you want to be up there. Why? Because you're faster, you're stronger. You're not just average. You're not just an average person. You want to be fast, you want to be quick, right? Do that slap shot at how many miles an hour? Kilometers an hour, so what? Hey. And that's what you want. That's not average, right? So there's nothing wrong with being average in life. And of course, if we go below this line, then we're unhealthy. And unfortunately, I do most of my day treating people here and trying to get them up even just to here. But you guys, I hope you're already above here, but we can talk about getting your way up there. So a lot of times when we do blood work, we're not looking to, in your guys' case, to see if you're unhealthy. We're trying to see if you're way, how close we can get you to the top of that pinnacle. Your best, your best self. If you were a car, can we put a bigger scoop on to scoop in more air? Can we change the spark plugs? You take your car and you tune it up, right? You can treat your body that way too. So I always put a little addendum, a little disclaimer, and say that all the right food, all the right sports drinks and all that does not replace team cohesiveness. Your coaches will work with you on being team players and an I can attitude, um, a growth mindset. I mean, I love that philosophy. A growth mindset means if you can't do something now, that's okay. You just say I can't do it yet. I can't shoot that 100 mile slap shot, whatever yet. But a growth mindset means you're going to be able to. So I'll put that out there. We're not going to talk any more about that today because we're not about nutrition. But nutrition doesn't take more precedent over hard work. Okay. So for top athletes, we're looking at how close can we get you to the top of the pinnacle up there. In medicine, when you go get blood work done through Alberta Health, or even through my clinic, I still use their reference ranges. A reference range is a bottom and a top. And they're basically designed to tell you somebody needs to be in the hospital. That's really what they're for. Now, that's being a little bit mean for me to say that, but then some of them are extremely wide and they're by no means good just for your health. So 
there are very wide reference ranges, and there's a concept that I want to describe to you. And you're all familiar with this. This is a speedometer. So here's our analogy. I'm going to pretend that I am a mechanic. Now, I'm not a doctor that treats people. I'm going to pretend I'm a mechanic. And this young man here, he is the proud owner of a Ferrari. Okay, so I'm going to use this as a direct comparison. Come on in, everyone, come on in. We're going to use this as a direct comparison to health. Right? Instead of a doctor, you pretend I'm a mechanic. He brings this Ferrari in to me, and he says, now, Mr. Mechanic, I drive down the highway, and I can go 100 kilometers an hour, but I put the pedal to the floor. Now, too often, as an analogy, in medicine, the doctor says, but can you drive 100? Well, how about you bring your Ferrari back to me when it won't do 100 anymore? Wouldn't you fire that mechanic? It's a Ferrari, guys. If you put the pedal to the metal, how fast would a Ferrari go? Fast. I don't know how fast, but I've never ridden in a Ferrari before. But okay, so you guys are high-level athletes. These ranges on things, if you sit anywhere close to the bottom, that's not good for you. You guys are high-level athletes. You, you got to sit at an optimal range for you. So not just for quote-unquote health. You want for athletic performance. Does that analogy make any sense? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, I'm not a mechanic, but I think the analogy works. So, what can we test? Well, here's one of the things we can test. This is a very routine test. It's done all the time by, by your doctor. And they are looking just to see if you're anemic. Because if you're anemic, you would be exhausted to play hockey. Anemic means you don't make enough red blood cells, or the red blood cells are not big enough to carry oxygen. Oxygen you breathe in, where's it got to go to? Your lungs. Yes, that's, you breathe in, it goes to your lungs. And that's good, that's pretty important, right? So if you had asthma, it wouldn't be bled into your lungs very good. But what's the ultimate place oxygen's got to go to? Muscles! It's got to go to your muscles, right? Because boom, 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 skating down the ice, you got to feed them oxygen. If it just stay in your lungs, that's no good, right? So this here, red part, actually tells us the percentage, and this is, says 45% of total, yeah, for average population. You guys might have 55% total oxygen carrying capacity, but we wouldn't know unless we measured it. And there's things you can do, even after supplements, you can take to try to increase that level of your red blood cells. There's all kinds of illegal things people can do that are highly dangerous, they're very hard on your heart because your blood can get so thick, like mud pumping through. Um, I'm a big fan of the Tour de France um, cyclists, and for many years, those guys like literally blew up their hearts. Have you guys ever heard of that? They take illegal drugs, get their blood so thick, this percentage would go so high as that the, blood, the heart couldn't pump it through. So, but there is an op there's an optimal range, there's a high level range, and there is too high, more is not always better. So that's one thing that's very easy to measure, and I would look beyond just the reference ranges, and I would want to see where are you in those reference ranges. If you guys ever get that blood work done, you don't need to see me to do that, ask for it, set it up on your phone, or look at the result, and look where you are on that range. You can see, it'll tell you how much oxygen you carry, it'll give you an idea how fast and far you could skate. Iron, Jonah mentioned iron. This is a real patient from a couple years ago. I blocked her name out. My name's up on the left. Ferritin is made by your liver. That's a carrier for iron. How much energy do you think this athlete had? Oh my goodness. Terrible. Pale as, pale as up. My shirt just white. No, I like, parents are like, can't even finish his shift. Oh, he's coming, jumping over. Or it's just perhaps out on the ice, falls down. Poor guy. You look, whoa, all the things. He's got iron. So we had to look at why that was. Now, this person actually had um, celiac disease, which we're not going to talk about today. But there's, there would be a reason why the iron was low. So 
That's very important. Iron carries oxygen. You need oxygen for your muscles to be able to go. So that's a common one. This is a hormone. You guys need any hormones, you always think, you know, puberty hormones. But we have lots of hormones, stress hormones and uh, thyroid hormone. Your thyroid hormone, your thyroid is like a bow tie. It's right here in your neck. And it's really important for your muscle recovery. So you ever done a real hard training practice? And you're like, man, you know, like days to recover from that. Sometimes people's thyroid is just a little, just a little slow, and uh, we can we can find that. So here, this person now last year in June, the reference range changed a little bit. But anyways, looking at where they are in the range, 3.85 on a scale to four, they're not going to die. They're fine. Nothing urgent. They don't need to go to the hospital. No worries. No worries. But 3.85, in this case, lower is healthier in this particular case because that one was made in the brain. They're right up close to the top end of the scale, which in this case is not good. We want them lower. And so I told them that, helped them out, get that number down, get these ones picked up. These ones we want higher. 13.9, 4.0. Push those ones up, pull this one down. Hey, now they recover. Now their energy is up. So those, that's one way of hormones. Now, has anybody heard one of my talks before? A couple of you have. Awesome. Okay. So this isn't uh, an I told you so thing. This is just an interesting factor. For a few years, I would always bring supplements because you guys always like me to bring them. And Jonas tells me. So I brought different supplements. Multiple of the Gatorades, not this one, they had something, BVO, bromelated vegetable oils. And for several years I said, guys, don't drink those ones. They're usually, they were cloudy. I think Mountain Dew still has it. Mountain Dew. Bromelated vegetable oils. I said, don't drink them because bromelated bromide, it's actually a fire retardant but it's put in drinks to make them look cloudy. And it, it, it holds an oil. It makes the, you know, it feels different. It doesn't feel like water on your tongue, per se. But bromide interferes with iodine. And the thyroid needs iodine to make thyroid hormones. And I say, guys, don't drink this. You guys are athletes. You need your thyroids. You gotta be able to go fast and recover fast. Don't drink those Gatorades. It was only Gatorade. Don't drink those Gatorades and put that in there. Guess what, last year, gone. In California, it's the first state to do it. Canada has not. They banned BBO, homely vegetable oils, from all um, foods, sports drinks, this kind of thing. Um, I think it was all. I think it was at least sports drinks. Um, and Gatorade does not have it anymore. So we'll talk in a bit more on hydration. I'm going to compare these for you. I think we'll have time. So there's your thyroid. That is something we can test. All these are chemical structures of hormones. There's progesterone, estrogen. Guys, I always like to talk about this one. That's your very good one for strong, big muscles, right? Testosterone, cortisol. This one's good, but if you get too much for too long, it'll mess up your sleep. So often we'll measure that one morning and nighttime, see what it's doing. And we can use things to help that. Okay, so those are all hormones. Every year I give this talk, I always remind people um, about this one. Does anybody know? I don't have a prize for you. Tomorrow night I will, because I'll give these out um, if somebody wants them. But the uh, does anybody know what that hormone is? And it's a trick question. Take a guess. Take a guess. It's it's really hard question, guys. Right? Parents, do you guys know? You, so, you, what? Oh, so close. He said calcium. Now calcium's a mineral. Oh yeah, it does. The, the, this hormone is involved in building your bone. You guys are so close. Protein. Protein is involved in building your bone. That's true. But this is not protein. But good. You guys are smart. You're getting. You're this close. You're this close. Okay, I'm going to tell you because uh, they're going to kick us out here at 6:30. What's that? It is a fat. Oh, if you just put everything together, you can come up with this answer. 
Say it again. Calcium. Calcium is a mineral. And it, okay, so it's, all right, guys, I'll tell you that. It is. It looks exactly like a hormone, but in regular language, we call it a vitamin. It's vitamin D. And vitamin D pulls calcium into your bloodstream. Vitamin Calcium is a mineral, which you do need for muscle recovery and muscle contraction. And vitamin D is really important. I was watching a docu-series, and a guy uh, broke his leg in a very unusual leg motion and just snapped right over. And I couldn't help but thinking, if his vitamin D levels were normal, would have that happened? I don't know. I didn't measure his vitamin D. But um, I have seen too many people in Airdrie, two brothers, playing in the playground within like two months of each other, each broke their arm. And so I said to the family, that would that be coincidence? Should we measure the vitamin? Oh, they're both low, like really low. So vitamin D is made by strong sun, sunlight, strong sunlight. If you stand outside in the wintertime, it could be a sunny day, you're like, ah, oh, I'm getting your vitamin D, my vitamin D. No, you're not. Because the sun is too low. And when the sun comes through the atmosphere, the, the ultraviolet rays are bent, and they're too weak. And they don't, they don't go deep enough to make vitamin D. So you'll make vitamin D starting in about May. May, June, it gets stronger. July, it's making lots of vitamin D in the sun. August, September, it gets weaker. October, it's nearly by November by now. You said it was you don't make vitamin D. So guys, make sure you take vitamin D. You guys are sports athletes. You're going to get hit, knocked into the boards. I don't want you guys breaking your bones. So. Parents, if you uh, appreciate the parents who came tonight, uh, if you guys want to remember this, for your age, you can be really particular and dose it right by body weight, but somewhere in the neighborhood of two to 3,000 IU, international units, every day. If you miss one day, double the next. If you miss the whole week, you can't take the whole week's worth at one shot. Okay, so you need to take that to protect your bones and your immunity. Okay, vitamin D. Good guess, you guys almost had it. You knew it had to do with calcium, that was awesome. Okay, supplements. So we talked about vitamin D, that, that's made by the sun <coughs> through the summertime, it's a supplement. Electrolytes, that's, um, I don't usually measure electrolytes in blood work because they change minute to minute. You go like this, you measure your blood work again, and your electrolytes aren't the same. So potassium, chloride, and calcium, and magnesium, phosphorus, there's nothing wrong with measuring them, but we can't measure them and be like, okay, we measured your electrolytes, therefore they're good. Well, measure them after a game, Measure them midway through a game. Measure them before the game. It's, it's, it's um, unreasonable. You can't measure them that often. So I rarely measure them. But we know that was the origin of Gatorade, the Florida Gators. They scraped the sweat off of their football players. And they took it to the lab. And they measured. And they're like, oh, there's potassium and chloride and sodium. And they're losing that stuff while they play football. Maybe that's why they cramp up sometimes. And that's what's the origin of Gatorade. Do you guys know that? Yeah. Ah, uh, right on, man. Yeah, so and those are electrolytes. Oh, there's no way you test. So another one, I commonly would suggest most high-level athletes will take magnesium after a, a day of a hard training camp or a um, where you have a series of games, a competition, a showcase, or a tournament. Yeah, like a tournament. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. you. Couldn't remember the word. At a tournament in the evening, right before bed, um, magnesium. Most athletes would take that. It helps relax the muscle, get its toned down a little bit more, so you can start the day the next day not quite as tight. You don't need as much stretching to get your muscles limbered and um, and uh, limbered up again. So I do like using magnesium. It's generally safe. There are multiple forms of magnesium. I probably don't have time to talk about all the forms. That particular form, this glycinate, is the kind 
least likely to have any negative side effects, and it's usually uh, the most best absorbed. If you take a very inexpensive magnesium, you took too much, does anybody know what would happen, the first thing that usually happens? Guys love to talk about this stuff. What? Oh, you know what? Actually, that can happen. Wow, you are meant for career medicine. Yes. Uh, that could happen. He said lightheaded. That is actually possible. Uh, because sometimes the blood pressure will go down, but the most common thing that will happen is you get diarrhea. Yeah, so we don't want to take too much magnesium. A lot of people make the mistake, they think just because it's a natural supplement, it's safe. That is not true. Natural supplements can do even worse things than diarrhea, but diarrhea is not fun. So anyways, um, I do want to make you aware, uh, magnesium, somewhere between 100 and 200 milligrams, generally will not give anybody um, diarrhea. If it ever did, you'd have to reduce the dose, and it can be very helpful for recovery. See what I mean? Start that next day with the muscles not quite. You mean, if you're doing a tournament or you're doing hard um, training camp, your muscles are gonna be sore. We're human, we're not robots. But we wanna minimize it and help you recover the fastest. So I love magnesium. Use it for most athletes. Yeah, I use it myself. And I don't always answer that question, but I myself. I don't know why I said that. But L-glutamine. Who's heard of this one? Yeah, it's in BioSteel now. Not in the one I picked here. Not in this BioSteel, but several BioSteels use L-glutamine. Now this particular one says for immune support. There were some studies. If people uh, run outside in the wintertime, the people who take L-glutamine uh, get slightly fewer um, upper respiratory tract infections, coughs and colds and that kind of thing. So they, they were allowed to put for immunity on there, which is pretty cool. But the um, L-glutamine does other things, which we don't have time to talk about today, but for you guys, you're, when you're doing a training camp, when you're doing a tournament, you might get a little bit low. Your body can actually make L-glutamine. Um, it's not an essential amino acid. There's eight essential ones. You have to get them from food. This one your body can actually manufacture, but when you're really pushing it, giving it, you don't have time to recover a lot, sometimes you get a little low on that, and even companies like BioSteel, or was it the Leafs, you're the Leafs fan, was it the Leafs who popularized BioSteel? Yeah. I think it was, right? They, they figured that out, that, um, hey, you're, you'll recover just a little bit faster, a little bit faster, if you take out glutamine. It's generally safe, there's very few um, side effects in extremely high doses. Your brain can convert it to glutamate. Has anybody heard of MSG? Monosodium glutamate? Okay. Say it again. You could cook with it. Um, yeah, you could cook with it. It's a flavor enhancer. But uh, so l glutamine is not totally safe, but generally at normal doses, like somewhere between three to 10 grams. Um, very, very, very few people would ever have side effects from it. But some people are like, wow, they told me to do um, two grams of protein per pound of body weight, which I don't think is a good idea. So they'll try to get it with so much albumin, they'll take too much and get side effects. Okay? So I do love albumin. How are we doing? Good. Good. Okay, maybe you haven't heard of these. So I knew some of you were going to hear about. <coughs> Um, the albumin with uh, with biosteel medicine. This is one of my favorite plant medicines. So coffee and tea, those are plant medicine, right? Coffee isn't a, something you eat for calories, right? You eat Subway sandwiches and pizza for calories. You don't eat, shouldn't eat coffee for calories, put so much cream and sugar in there, right? I love this plant medicine. It has a Caffeine-like effect it does not have caffeine in it. Caffeine-like is um, oh the name is I think it's called rose, rose statin is the active ingredient that is caffeine-like. I apologize if I'm being videoed if I have that name wrong. Uh, it's recorded forever. Um, it starts with an R. It is an active ingredient. It's a caffeine-like effect. One of the most common uses I use this for, which I'm sure none of you guys need to worry about, but uh, the, and if you do, that's totally fine too. I commonly use this to help out ADHD because it tends to help focus and it isn't associated with the same decrease in appetite. It actually doesn't have a decrease in appetite. It doesn't have the side effect. Now it is far weaker than, than most ADHD, far weaker than most ADHD medications, 
but um, it is good for performance. So if it has a caffeine you like effect, some people will stack them. They'll have a cup of coffee and take rhodiola with it. If you do that, I'm not saying you shouldn't, talk to your parents about it, you gotta be careful. As soon as you stack things together, EGCG, green tea, coffee, and start to stack them, they piggyback off of each other. That's not always safe, okay? But I'm not saying it's terrible. If you're gonna do something like that, you talk to your parents, okay? But rhodiola is a fascinating medicine. It was originally used in the, the um, sort of the, not quite far east, but I think Siberia, that's sort of an outskirt of uh, maybe on the west end of Russia, northwest end if I remember correctly. And the original use of rhodiola, because it grows wild there, they would pick it in the root in the fall, for real, and they used it to help with stamina and energy when they would go hunt reindeer. So imagine like Canadian or worse winters, like very rough winters, and, and thousands of years these folks have lived there, and, and you're getting hungry because your food supply is getting down, you gotta go chase some reindeer up for miles, right? And you're like, oh, I'm living on rutabaga and you know, whatever they ate, right? So they take some of this up, and probably like a tea, I imagine, and it's what they didn't have coffee trees growing there, so this is what they used, it has a coffee-like effect. Okay. Questions about that? Who's heard of rhodiola? Sweet, I told you guys something you never heard of before. Who's heard of this one? What? Oh, yeah. No <laughs> way. <laughs> How did you hear about it? What? Oh, you guys, you beat me to it. Okay, so I kind of wondered if you would hear about this one a bit more. So ashwagandhas became very popular because it may help testosterone, especially if people aren't sleeping well. So its original use, I told you the original use of, um, oh, we're okay, Joe and I, I'm just after six, so you guys should slow down a bit. <laughs> um, I told you uh, rhodiola's original use. Ashwagandha's original use was not at all for men. It was actually grows wild in India. Apparently that word, ashwagandha, means smell of horse hair or something like that. And it was originally used for insomnia and menopause. Now it has the word men in there, but it has nothing to do with men, I hope. Um, so menopause is a, is a hormonal change of life for ladies. And some ladies will get um, anxious and they can't sleep well and, and this kind of thing. That's what its original use for, was for some time in the area where it grows naturally. But there's few studies on that particular thing in modern day, but there's a lot of studies on men, testosterone, and testosterone. Now, the overdose, if you took, see how it says moderate stress supports cardiovascular, okay? Immune, cognitive, and joint function. Wow, it's like it's, it does miracles, right? Yeah. I, I hate when the companies put too many indications on bottles because you're like, oh, really? That's kind of too good to be true, right? But the, what I would say is it does help a little bit with the immune system. And moderate stress, yes, I could see that. It could, it could moderate, sorry, but it could moderate stress a bit. It's shown to help cortisol. Cortisol goes too high when you go out to skate or, or it's your turn to get the puck if your cortisol was too high, you'd be anxious. You, you wouldn't know what to do, you'd pass it off. Okay, so as you guys train and train and you develop your skills, these kind of moments are gonna happen less and less anyways. Maybe that never happens to you. But uh, that, that is a good one for somebody who has a tendency to be nervous. Ah, oh, what if I fail? If I fail, I got so much pressure on myself. Scouts are there. Gotta do good. Gotta make it. Gotta do good. And you get you get caught up in your head way too much. And uh, it it's not a replacement for team spirit, I can growth attitude, all that kind of stuff that we talked about. But it is a way to help just calm down. Now, if you took way too much of it, it might upset your tummy. Not sure about that. But you'd fall asleep. So um, now I have patients who are school teachers. And they will take a decent dose of this before um, parent-teacher interviews, and they do not fall asleep. It just calms them down enough that they can be 
cloud and can you know get to get to the bank. So, so you guys you learned it from TikTok, eh? Did I teach you anything they didn't say on TikTok? In TikTok? <laughs> TikTok, the new. It's not Dr. Google anymore. It's Dr. TikTok, right? <clears throat> so okay, when. Um, I want to go through these here with you guys, and uh, we have we have enough time now that I can I can go through this. <laughs> you guys were making some guesses, and I actually heard some of you earlier on. I won't point out point you guys out. I don't want you embarrass you, but some of you actually I think guessed fairly good. Can anybody of these one, two, three, four, five? Let's label them like this. We'll go through show of hands and just for fun. I, I, I actually don't have to show hands, I don't want to be on video. But in your own mind, do you think this one is the best? In your own mind, do you think this is? So this is uh, Powerade, Fruit Punch, Gatorade Zero, BioSteel Sports Hydration. Okay, we got we got a cheer for that one. Prime, let's go. We got a cheer for that one. So and it's Powerade Melon Pineapple. Okay, so just, just in your own mind, you want to say which one you think is best. So, first one I'm going to say about this BioSteel Sports Hydration. Expensive. It's a good point. I bought all these, uh, and I was like, wow, that's a lot of money for those. Uh, oh, somebody wants in. You guys? Yeah. Yeah. Come on in. No worries, no worries. So, this one here is actually pretty good. It is expensive, for those who said that. I totally agree. I think they have overpriced it for what's in it. Now, the ingredients, the first ingredient is water, electrolytes. So we talked about that. Sodium, citric, potassium, um, calcium, magnesium. Sea salt, that's good. Citric acid, natural flavors. Stevia, does anybody know what stevia is? Go ahead. Yes. It comes from a plant, that's even more accurate. It's actually not a sugar, um, but, but you're totally on the right track. Stevia is a little bush, and it has leaves. My mom actually has one. If you pick the leaf off, it's sort of a, like a tiny little leaf, and it's squishy, and when you chew it, the sap that comes out of that leaf is really sweet, but then it kind of, because you just ate a leaf, it has a bit of a, like a green tea kind of a flavor to it. So some people don't like stevia because they find it almost like a bitter kind of sweet, bitter sweet. But stevia is a natural sweetener. And, okay, sort of cool dry place. I like this. It's fine for the electrolytes. But guys, if you're going to use this, and you're playing hockey and you have this in your water bottle, what's the missing ingredient that you need in order to continue to burst, burst, burst? Magnesium. It's in there, but, but uh, I love it, I love it. Water. Water's the first ingredient. <laughs> yep. Water's the first ingredient. Oh, calcium. Calcium admitted. Now, guys, there's traces of these things in here. Okay. Sugar. So I love stevia, it won't rot your teeth. It is good for people who are diabetic. It's good for people who want to lose weight. You guys are jumping over the boards and skating your butts off. You can have sugar, okay? And in fact, if you give your muscles a little bit of sugar, if you give a lot of sugar, let's say you're just eat sugar, we would pull water into your gut and you get a gut ache. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying if you wanted to put this in your bottle, in your water bottle, you know what you should do? Does, does anybody know what real maple syrup is? There's naturally occurring electrolytes in real maple syrup. If you took this, put it in your water bottle, and you put in one teaspoon of real maple syrup, you could even add a little bit more water to it. Shouldn't we make that? We could become millionaires. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it right, let's do it right now. Uh, go ahead. Say it again. Yeah. 
Okay. You can. You can do. He, so his question was that I'm going to get to your question. Can you do the same thing with honey? Honey, honey uh, is an invert sugar. It's very, very close. It's not pure glucose. It's glucose and fructose flipped. Uh, honey wouldn't work. I like honey. Nothing wrong with that. Um, the, the only advantage of maple syrup is there's actually maple syrup comes from a tree, and a tree takes minerals up from the soil for its leaves. And in maple syrup is actually minerals, whereas there's not in honey. But I love honey. I do. So I love honey. Your question? I love the last you did? Awesome. Okay, so the um, that's what I would say. There's nothing wrong with this, but you guys, you can handle sugar. You can benefit from sugar. Should, should you do it right now while you're sitting here doing nothing? No, you should not eat sugar right now. There's a time and place for it, right? But when you're skating in your game, a little bit of sugar uh, will will be fine. One, you're going to burn it off, and two, you need it for fuel. Yeah? What is the Could be okay. I now, take one after every uh, period. Okay, okay. That's not a bad idea. That, actually, that could okay. work. We have those in my clinic. If somebody was to, uh, sometimes we have to give blood or draw blood, things like that. If they were to get hypoglycemic or kind of feel faint, we'll give them one of those sugar tablets. Yeah, go ahead. The powder bio steel? Yeah. There's a few kinds. Some of them have L glutamate that I showed you before. Yeah, no, I just picked on this one, and there's a few flavors of this one, but just because it said sports hydration, it does. But um, I, I wanted you guys to know that you could make it better for your games by putting in a bit of sugar, and my favorite one would be a little bit of maple syrup. What's your question? What if you said it like M-tree, we just like put that here? Yeah, so caffeine um, helps you, helps your body actually use some of your um, triglyceride body fat stores as fuel, and that caffeine would be good for endurance. Go, go, go. Um, it might, I don't know how much it will help with explosive power, whereas that's where the sugar could help. Because sugar can, like you can run a 100 meter run, you guys probably could, I don't know if I could anymore, could when I was your age though, without withholding your breath. Do you believe that? Yeah. Yes. So take a couple big breaths. One, 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 one. How are you running without breathing? What are you burning? You're actually burning a type of fuel inside your muscle called glycogen, but you're also burning sugar. But eventually, like somewhere around 100 meters, you gotta breathe. That's when you burn off body fat. And because body fat needs oxygen in order to burn, sugar does not. So that explosive hop off the boards, Bam, get out there to receive the pass or shoot or whatever. That's a lot of that. It really looks, but if you're just cruising, skating around, um, in, in those seconds you're doing that, you're burning a lot of body fat. Or, or if it's not body fat, it's fat from the food you just ate. Okay? But that real explosive stuff, that's where you need some sugar. So I thought you could make this a little bit better, but I like this one. Can we go to, go to another one? Yeah. Yeah? What's your question? It's about mixed files. You put them all, you, you like the stacks. Mixed bio steel, he said, with maple syrup and um, sugar. Talk to your parents about it. Like, you don't want you to get sick, but it's possible. It's possible. Okay, so a few slides back, I showed you the thyroid. It's this gland in your neck. I told you how a few years ago, um, I gave, even on one of the Zoom talks that I did for you guys, I held it up, it's like, this has bromelated vegetable oils. This one does not. I'm telling you something that's brand new in 2023. In fact, in my office, I have carried a supplement that helps kids with coughs. And they sweeten it with? Just make sure I'm not holding up the wrong bottle here. Can you read that? About my thumb? What's it say? Sucralose. Sucralose is a chlorinated sugar. Okay, swimming pool, where's the swimming pool in there? You know that smell? What's that smell? Chlorine. Yeah, yeah chlorine. What, so the way sucralose is made is they take chlorine under 
I actually don't know exactly how it's made. I don't know if it's under massive pressure or if it's done through a uh, some type of uh, chemistry chain reaction, but it's chlorinated sugars. So some of the ends of the sugar um, are popped off and chlorine is stuck on there, okay? Now, I have a supplement that I have in my clinic, but in good conscience, I can't sell it to people without telling them it anymore because in this year, 2023, several massive studies came out showing sucralose damages your gut, affects muscle recovery, and can even in animals cause cancers. Well, this is the, this is the same thing what I told you guys before about um, Gatorade and the bromelain vegetable oils affecting your thyroid. Guys, I do not recommend any drinks. Now, if you drink one, it's not gonna kill you. We all do things that are bad for us sometimes, right? But I'm talking about if this is your drink of choice uh, for hockey and you think, now I just said it's got, um, Gatorade Zero has no sugar in it. I just said, what do you guys need to go fast? Yeah, that doesn't mean you eat sugar for breakfast. I mean, in your pain, it's okay to have a bit of sugar, okay? So, Zeros, sweetened with, with aspartame or sucralose, uh, I do not recommend it. Sucralose now, California has not banned it yet, as far as I know, I actually checked last night, but it is being up to be banned in California too, and then you see, see the ripples of that go out through, through the world. So this one, and somebody else's favorite one. Oh man, because this one actually I liked it and I bought it um, some time ago because I'd never seen it before. And I always like to try things that are, you know, I have a special interest in sports medicine. And I was like, I try. I was like, I like the flavor of it. Oh, sucralose in there too. Yeah. In there too. Now, uh, there's an interesting thing in the prime that tricked me. In the ingredients, filtered water, coconut water, ooh, extra electrolytes for coconuts, um, citric acid, phosphorus, there's an electrolyte. Um, let's keep going here. There's your sucralose. Then it has proteins. You have to go protein in the, the powdered one, there's proteins in there. L-leucine, L-valine, those are branch chain proteins. They're meant for muscle recovery. But then when you look up here at how much protein is in the bottle, how much protein is in there? Zero. What the world? They list protein in the ingredients, but it must be such a minute amount that it's not even enough to show up on the nutrition facts. It's a zero protein. I was like, boom, that's such garbage. So, if you guys want it, but um, it's got two hits against it in my my, uh, my world. So I put that closer up there. Coke Zero we talked about. That one down here. Uh, okay, we'll talk about this one. Powerade. So I like Powerade. And generally, what I like about them is many of the forms of Powerade have a little bit of vitamin B12. They got your sugar in there. Okay, we read the ingredients. Reverse osmosis water, sugar, glucose, fructose, citric acid, natural flavor, salt, sodium citrate, potassium, those are electrolytes. You need them so your muscles don't cramp, guys. Okay, you, you don't want your muscles to cramp. Ascorbic acid, that's vitamin C. Magnesium, oh, for the gentleman over here. Um, calcium for somebody else. Okay, tartrazine. What is the number one favorite kids? You guys are all young adults now, but what's the favorite kids' dinner that has tartar seed in it? Chicken nuggets. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Yellow dye number five. What is one of the most common side effects of yellow dye number five? Inattention, nervousness, anxiety. Okay, so here we have tartar seed, which is what color? Yellow. yellow, yellow, yellow. And the very next ingredient is brilliant blue. Guys, what happens when you mix yellow and blue together? Green. Why do they do that, guys? You guys are athletes, You're supposed to listen to your coaches. You ramped up a tart say, what, 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 behavioral type issues. Uh, my my wife works as an EA for one of the schools and she says some of the kids who have some real behavior trouble should just 
wishes they would eat, you know, this, this round thing that has a stem on it. It's called an apple. They could they just eat something that's not from a box and from prepackaged. But anyways, guys, the green one, chuck, chuck that one too. So of the ones that are up here, I think this one is probably one of the better ones. It doesn't have sucralose. It doesn't have tartrazine. It's got your other things in there. It's got, um, okay, reverse osmosis water, uh, sugar, citric acid, salt, sodium citrate, so there's electrolyte, potassium phosphate, electrolyte, natural flavor, could be anything, vitamin C, Allura red, no, that's you know, red food coloring, but okay, we gotta pick our battles here, guys. We live in a real world. We can't get everything chucked in blessed by the Pope or whatever, like McDonald's does, right? Um, magnesium chloride, calcium, cyanocobalamin is a cheap form of vitamin B12, but they put, it's the last ingredient. There's a tiny little bit of vitamin B12 in there. You don't expect it to replace eating a good, healthy diet like eggs and meat are, are very, your big source of vitamin B12. That's actually another lab. Uh, oh, I forgot that slide. Skipped over some. Other, I often measure vitamin B12, I measure vitamin D, things like that. Because if your vitamin B12 is low, you're not going to do well um, out on the ice. So I tried to leave room for questions. So I would put, I would sort of do, I don't know, these three together. I don't know how to say first place, second place, but you can make this stack that our friend over here will do. <laughs> Maybe this one then will be up here, right? Is that, is that helpful for me to go through that with you guys? Yeah, yeah. it doesn't have to be red, like the powdery. Oh, um, no, I should have bought, I should have bought, I just, um, on a budget. So, no, I couldn't buy every single one in the store, but can you look through the ingredients um, and, and try to remember? I did send a handout to Jonah. If your parents would like it, it's just a PDF, they could bring it up on the form. I don't go into all this detail because then it would be pages and pages and they just never read it, but why don't we try the blue one? Because I think it's okay. I think it has a brilliant blue, but they don't put the tartrazine in there. I think the blue one would be okay as well. Go ahead. What if we just do water? <laughs> water is great. And water is the most important. Uh, uh, that's actually one of my slides tomorrow night, because I'm not, if you're a parent of kids in both sessions, I'm not I'm doing the exact same talk. I'm talking a lot more about like breakfast and, and tomorrow I've got breakfast cereals that I'll bring up uh, up here. So water is probably the most important sport performance supplement you can you can do. Yeah, so water is fine. The risk there is cramping because when you're sweating out um, sodium and chloride and potassium. You just drink water. Water's got none of that in there. Yeah. Well, water, banana. Ah! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so now that's more like what I'm giving my talk tomorrow night. But yeah, using food uh, as, as a way to improve your electrolyte balance. And that. Yes, water and banana, that's good. So, one of the things I'm going to mention tomorrow night is a, a good post meal thing is chocolate milk, if you guys don't have dairy sensitivity or anything like that because it's got your sugar, your carbohydrate, which is sugar, your protein and a little bit of fat in there and, uh, and calcium. So, but yes, I love a banana. Um, I don't know if it's totally off, but have you done any looking to smell it salts? Like if somebody passes out? No, uh, I mean, it's pretty common. A lot of hockey players are using it on the benches and stuff. To, to smell them or to uh, put it just in Just kind of get a little bit more alert. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so the, uh, I think there is, like they're sharp. Have you smelled them? Yeah, they're, they're pretty sharp. And there's another, there's all kinds, of, we can talk about that stuff, it's so fascinating. For cramps, another thing people will do um, is actually mustard packs. Uh, I was gonna mention that, they'll actually carry that. And it's just a little mustard pack because you can be somewhere. Rip it open, stick it with a bit of water, and there's an idea that the central nervous system actually responds to the sour taste on your tongue. People used to say it was because mustard is an acetylcholine donor. It's very technical, but 
It might not be that. It might work through a similar pathway of smelling salts. Yeah. So I haven't seen a study on it, and I, I honestly haven't looked to see if anybody studied that. But I'm not surprised by that. I think it. Well, so I, I was kind of hoping you would kind of talk against it because I mean, there's there's some. <clears throat> I've heard that there's some correlation between that and some like heart issues. So. I, mean, I, don't I, don't know. Know. I don't know if that's actually true. Uh, I haven't seen studies on it. I, I can see how it would work, and man, people will do anything to get, get an advantage. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's something we would use if somebody passed out. I, never, I don't think we'd be recommended to, but that's on an as needed basis. Uh, I have it in my first aid kit at work if somebody passed out. I mean, usually I have had that happen lots. I usually just lay them down, lift their feet up tap on the feet in their back in these a second or two anyways, but they really weren't. We just put smelling salts. Or peppermint will even do it too. Everything in moderation. Yeah, in moderation. Almost everything in moderation except moderation, right? Uh, what would you say to the players that have a Red Bull or like a monster before a game? Yeah, if they can concentrate with that, I mean, that is a lot of caffeine. Like some of them have over 200 MGs, maybe 300 MGs of caffeine. Like you, there is a diminishing return. Like there's there's caffeine helpful, 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 and then there's a point where you have the caffeinated squirrel in front of you who can't follow any instructions. So um, my two sons are very different, and they're they're um, so that's just my my personal experience. I have two sons. One almost is calmer with that much caffeine, which I don't know have very often, and the other one just he's <laughs> useless. <laughs> say this on video. And you know what you said? We have recorded on video? Um, my, my other study does not do all that. So on an individual basis, it's, it's a lot. I, I think that now in some sports, the amount of caffeine that you can take is sanctioned. Like there's an upper limit. If you had more than that, it, it, it's considered to be cheating. So you do have to watch. It's a bit high. What was it? You would know. I mean, it has caffeine in there. It's 400. Yeah, so I mean, that's a lot. And if you've tried it, you do okay with it. Um, but that is a lot. You gotta, your pulse rate's going to pick up a lot, push a lot of blood flow to your brain. Your nervous system really engages. If you can still follow instructions, know a play, and, and listen to your coach and respond to your players, and you do okay with it. But guys, more is not always better. Yeah, more is not always better. Um, I know many um, athletes who get trapped into other drugs like amphetamines and other things that they, and for performance gains. So don't get into those kind of slippery slopes that you get addicted, you can't get out of some real bad habits, right? What would you say about like creatine? I think creatine's okay, yeah. Um, creatine, and taking too long, you might find a little bit of muscle heaviness because it does pull a lot of water in, but it does provide you with that at least initial bursts of of um, energy, creatine phosphate, creatine monohydrate, it's gonna help build that energy pathway. I think it's okay, yeah, I'm glad you asked about that. If you take a lot of it, and don't do the loading phases, because they just wanna sell you more creatine. So they'll say, load, 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 and then come back. No, just take a teaspoon, yeah. Uh, it, it's a waste, you, nobody can load it like that. I've never seen a study to support that you can load it. And correct me if I'm wrong, send me the information, and I'll stand corrected. But I think creatine is okay, even for kids your age. And provided you have normal kidney function, it should not be a problem. What BCA? Branched chain amino acids. So in this one, that's what you meant, right? BCA branched chain. This one, remember they put the leucine, isoleucine, and valine? Those are branched chain amino acids. But then you go through how much protein is in here, and it says zero. You told me they were in here, but then how much? Zero. So they put such a trace amount. But branched chains, yes, they do help the uh, recovery of the muscle, there's studies to show. L-glutamine is not a branched chain. I showed that one up here. It's not a branched chain amino acid, but um, they work well together. L-glutamine with leucine, isoleucine, valine, I think they're helpful for recovery. In one of the greatest ways you can do that, put a little bit of it out of chocolate milk. It's a great recovery drink. Because you need the carbohydrates and the insulin response to push it into your muscle. Yep, yep, that's good. Guys, I knew you would have good questions. I tried to leave us a good 10 minutes. It is 6.30 now. I don't have to run immediately. The guy's going to come in pretty simple. <laughs> it's a great one, guys. He's great. Right. 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 Right.
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Was that okay, guys? Thank you.